Hi, I'm Tini. Welcome back to my channel. I am trying a slightly different background for this video, so let me know what you think. But today I am here with another secondhand book haul. So this weekend I went to visit my mum in the town that she lives in. It was all outside, socially distanced, it was all good, but we had a really nice day wandering around the town. We had some brunch. It was really, really nice. We also raided all of the charity shops for books and I have so many books <laughs> to talk to you about today. I'm gonna try and go through them as quickly as possible and not say like too much about each one individually just because there are so many so let's get straight into it. First I think I'm gonna talk about the ones that aren't necessarily like literary I guess I don't really know any other way to explain it but it is these three and this enormous one is the Kodak book of photography. Uh, I actually just realized that I like color-coded my outfit and makeup to this book by accident um, so that's fun but this is actually not for me this I got for my boyfriend he is an artist and he likes to have like art books and photography books around the house for reference for like composition and colour theory and colour palettes I guess I don't know I'm so bad at art stuff but he likes to have them around and he also does do photography himself so I thought this book was like perfect to him because it is a kind of like how to do photography like photography tips and tricks book but it also has all of these really cool example photos so it's basically perfect um and he really liked it when I gave it to him so that is really good it was one pound fifty as well so bargain the next one in this kind of category is this and originally I got it for a, the same kind of reason it is called a concise history of posters um and it does what it says on the tin it's basically just a book about poster art and how posters have been used throughout history in different places and for various different purposes um and it's just full of all of these like really cool vintage posters so i had originally intended to like give this to my boyfriend for the same kind of thing for like references for his own art um but i actually upon like flipping through it myself think that i kind of want to extract some of my favorites from this book and actually frame them and hang them up around our house because i think they're so cool um it's just all this really cool like vintage art and there's so many fun ones in here um so yeah and this was like 20p so if I do end up doing that and like framing some of these pictures that is some really cool vintage art to get for 20p the third and final book in this kind of category is kind of a wild card <laughs> excuse the pun there because this book is a step-by-step -step tarot I am not a spiritual person in any way shape or form but I am fascinated by tarot cards I have three decks I think um I have one deck that's like the classic one like the ones on this book and I've actually put them inside this really cool clock I found in an antique shop so all of the numbers are like the corresponding major arcana card and there's some other cards of the major arcana in the middle maybe I'll um put a little like clip of that clock in here um and that's just like me appreciating tarot as art because I think they look really cool but I also have always been kind of interested in learning at the very least what all of the different cards mean and symbolize and then I'm maybe also interested in learning how to read them but more for a like personal like self-reflection kind of thing rather than anything kind of spiritual um but this book is really cool actually i've had like a little flick through and it's got these really nice concise 
pages about each card, what it symbolizes, what it kind of means. It's also got like really simple like diagrams of all the different kind of layouts you can use and like ways to read them, uh, which is super fun. And I feel like it definitely is kind of aimed at people more like me who just are kind of dipping into it for something. I don't want to say fun because I know like a lot of people take this really seriously and I don't want to trivialize it for anyone that does believe in this spiritually but like for me personally this is just something that I want to do as more of a self-reflection journaling type thing like I said um, and I feel like this is more aimed at that. There's also this really fun section in it about um, using the tarot for like generating creative writing prompts which I just thought was so fun um so really pleased with this this was 20p as well so super chuffed with that now let's move on to the books that are more what I guess you were expecting when you came to this booktube channel um like books that I want to read for entertainment so when I go to a charity shop or a secondhand bookshop there's like two categories of books that I'm looking for. The first and most obvious one and the one that is like most of the books here is books that are already on my radar that I want to read and I'm just trying to see if I can find any of them for cheaper than buying them brand new. The second category of books that I'm looking for when I shop for books at charity shops and secondhand bookshops is books that I've already read and that I loved but that I don't own my own physical copy of and that might be because I read it on audio or because I borrowed it from the library or from a friend and that is the category that this next book falls into and it is How To Be Famous by Catelyn Moran. I read How To Build A Girl which is the first one in this series in February 2020 I think and I loved it like I was genuinely surprised by how much I enjoyed that book um I think I gave it four out of five it's still on my bookshelf I adore that book I think it's fantastic and then in September 2020 I got How To Be Famous from the library thinking that I probably wouldn't like it anywhere near as much as I enjoyed the first one just because I don't tend to like sequels or series that much but I ended up reading it in one sitting and loving it even more than the first one. I gave this one a 5 out of 5 so I was super happy that this was in the charity shop and it can now join its predecessor on my bookshelf. Okay so all of the next books are books that I have not read. The first two I think were one pound each from the same charity shop and the first one is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Um, this is a classic that I think a lot of people read at school but I never did so it is a classic that I have yet to read. I am also working on a project um, that I will be reading this book for so wait for that. Yeah so I was super excited to find this in the charity shop and I actually really like this cover as well. I don't like a lot of the covers that I find in charity shops but this one I think is actually pretty cool. Next, from the same shop and also for a pound, I was so excited to find this book. It is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hudson. I've heard so much about this book and how good it is, so I'm super, super excited that I found it. I don't love this cover. I know that there are much, much, much prettier covers of this book in the world, but it was a pound so not to be sniffed at. Uh, from what I've heard just kind of on booktube and bookstagram and from reading the blurb this is about a young woman who's kind of like married off at 16 but then she meets a man she actually falls in love with and it's kind of about like her quest for self-fulfillment and kind of dropping conventions and just trying to be happy but it sounds really interesting I've heard nothing but good things about this book. The next shop we went into um, there weren't really that many books I was super excited about but it was three books for 99p so I could not have walked out of that shop with no books. Do you know what I mean? Um, so in that shop I picked up three books for 99p. Uh, the first one is The Curious Incident 
of the dog in the nighttime by Mark Adden. This is like one of those books that everyone kind of knows of it, but I don't know anyone that's read it. And I don't actually know what it's about. So I've kind of picked this up out of curiosity more than anything else. It's about 15 year old Christopher who has a photographic memory. He finds his neighbor's dog lying dead on the lawn, tries to track down the killer and write a murder mystery about it. So it sounds like a quick fun read. It's not very long. I think this would be a good reading slump breaker kind of book. I'm so excited to read that. The next one I picked up was purely for nostalgia. It is Knots and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. This is one of the books that I cite in my booktube newbie tag as like one of the books that got me into reading as a teenager. Some of my friends read this whole series. I think I only read number one and number two. Um, but it was definitely like one of the more interesting YAs I remember reading as a teenager. In case you don't know what Knots and Crosses is about, it is about a world in which um, I guess racism is reversed. So it is black people who hold all the power and white people who are being oppressed. Mallory Blackman is a black author. This is a giant picture of her face. Oh my god, it's signed! That's amazing. It's signed. I'm never getting rid of this book now, even if I don't enjoy it as much as I remember enjoying it. That's so great. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, but yeah, I got this purely for nostalgia to reread it and see if I love it as much as I loved it when I was a teenager. It's basically about a world in which racism is reversed, so it is black people that run everything, they have all the power, and it is white people who are oppressed in this society. Um, and it's about two teenagers, I think. Oh yeah, so here you go. Callum is a not, a second class citizen in a world run by the ruling crosses. Um, so Callum is white, Sefi is a cross door of one of the most powerful men in the country, Sefi is black. Um, in their world, they don't mix. Hostility turns to violence. There's like an uprising and they're kind of thrust together and it's kind of a love story so I'm not expecting to love this as much as I did when I was a teenager because love stories are really not my thing but purely for nostalgia and now that I know that it's signed um, I'm never getting rid of it. That is so fantastic. What a nice surprise! Um, the final book that I got from that charity shop and again this, these were like three for 99p is the one that I'm actually the most excited about and it is A Pale View of Hills by Kazuo Ishiguro. It's a really interesting cover actually as well. I don't hate it. I don't love it either but I don't hate it. I really want to read The Remains of the Day by Ishiguro but they didn't have that one. They had this one um, but I know that he's such an acclaimed author and that so many people rave about his writing that I was really excited that they had something by him. It is about Itsuko, a Japanese woman now living alone in England, dwelling on the suicide of her daughter. Retreating into the past, she finds herself reliving one particular hot summer in Nagasaki when she and her friends struggled to rebuild their lives after the war. She then recalls her strange friendship with Sachiko, a wealthy woman reduced to vagrancy. The memories take on a disturbing cast. It sounds really interesting, it sounds like something I would pick up anyway and I've heard so many great things about Ishiguro that I have no doubt I'm gonna love this book and maybe it will finally kick me into picking up The Remains of the Day. That's something that I really love about charity book shopping um, actually and I think it's something that maybe I should address. I know that there's a discussion about whether or not buying books from charity shops is good for authors because obviously artists should be paid for their work. I think if you can afford to buy all your books brand new and it's something you want to do you should absolutely do that. Never feel bad about buying books brand new but also not everyone can afford to do that and I don't really know where I stand on the whole the author's not getting any money from it argument because somebody already bought this book like if it didn't go to a charity shop it would have just gone to a landfill <laughs> so um or have been recycled or something the thing that i'm getting to is that if i love this book i'll probably pick up the remains of the day full price to make sure that an author that i love does get some of my financial support and i just think that like if there's books or authors you don't know that you love already charity shops 
are a really great way to kind of access those books and discover new things. Moving on. In the next charity shop I only got one book because um, they were individually priced I think and this was the only one that interested me and it is The Kite Runner by Khalid Hassini. This book is so famous. I think everyone I know that's into reading has read this book and it's one of those kind of like a modern classic. Like that's the word, it's a modern classic. <laughs> And I'm really excited to read it because it's been on my list for ages. This is also gonna be part of a project where I read some books for a video series. I wonder if anyone will guess what I'm doing before I actually release any videos about it, but you will at some point see a reading vlog of this book. And then the last charity shop I went in was Oxfam and I am hesitant about Oxfam because I find they can be very expensive for a charity shop. None of these were actually that expensive. I think all of these were $1.99 or something, which is not terrible. It's not 20p or 3 for 99p affordable, but it's still, you know, for books you're interested in reading, it's still a really affordable price. So I was happy to pick these ones up. Um, the first one is Writers and Lovers by Lily King. So I know that Noel Gallagher loves this book and I know that it was super popular on booktube when it first came out because I think it was one of the book of the month books in the US. Um, and so many people were just like praising this book to the high heavens. It's one that I've been interested in for ages but because it's got this love story edge. <laughs> I'm just not sure if I'm gonna love it as much as everyone else who raves about it does just because like romance books, love stories are not my thing. It's like a very slice of life millennial story. It's about Casey who is 31, all her friends are getting married and having kids. She feels like she's getting old and that she's running out of time. She's also just had a really difficult breakup and she's mourning the loss of her mum. And then she meets, I think, two men? Yes, she meets two men. That says she suddenly finds herself in a love triangle. So that ordinarily would be enough for me to never pick this book up because love triangles is one of my personal pet peeves for books and stories um but I've heard a lot of people say that the writing in this book is fantastic and particularly that the writing about grief and like not knowing what to do with your life is really interesting so I am willing for two pounds to give it a go. The next one is one that I'm actually super super excited about reading and it is The Beekeeper of Aleppo. This is a book that I would 100% have picked up full price had I not found it in the charity shop. Uh, I've wanted to read it for ages. It is about a man who is a beekeeper and his wife who is an artist. They live in Syria but they are forced to flee and become refugees and it is about their journey from Syria to Britain as refugees um, and that is all I needed to know. It sounds incredible, it sounds like it's gonna be really heart-wrenching, maybe even quite difficult to read. I think it's all about like their relationship and how this journey that they go on, this terrifying, terrifying journey and situation that they're in kind of actually brings them closer together in a way. Should clarify that like when a love story is not the main focus of a book and if it's already an established relationship I'm all for it. It's just like books about like romance and falling in love that I kind of find annoying and especially with like love triangles and st I don't know I just find it really annoying but like this this sounds fantastic. I am so so excited to read this book. Um, there are so many here and I don't know when I'll get to them all but this is one of the higher priority ones. And now the last book. So how many is that? That is 12. 12 books. So all of these 12 books. Let me do the maths quick. Hang on. SA me. The phone. Maths and me. We're, we're not friends. So bear with me. Okay. So from what I could work out, because 
I don't actually remember how much this one was exactly and it doesn't have a price sticker on it but all the other ones do and I got all 12 of these books for under £13. If that's not a bargain I don't know what is. But now back to the last book that I got in this entire haul. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, that's right. It is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Um, I've never read any Charles Dickens except for A Christmas Carol, which I was forced to read at school. Um, and I feel like even if I hadn't read A Christmas Carol, I would know the story, you know? Because, I mean, A, the Muppets, and B, everyone. It's just cultural osmosis at this point. But I would like to read some Charles Dickens, try and read it for fun, see if I actually get on with him as an author. This is also another one that I will be reading for the project. I need to get around to editing the first video for that soon because otherwise I just keep like alluding to it as this mysterious thing and I'm worried that I'm hyping it up a bit too much and it might not be that interesting. Um, but I'm interested to see if you guys can guess what that video is. But yes, I don't really know what this is about. I just saw it, uh, remembered it was a famous one and remembered that it was one of the books that I needed to pick up for that project. And so I got it. Uh, it says, I mean, it does actually sound kind of interesting. After 18 years as a political prisoner in the Bastille, Dr. Minette is finally released and reunited with his daughter in England. They're the wives of two very different men, Charles Adani, an exiled French aristocrat, and Sidney Carton, a disreputable but brilliant English lawyer, become enmeshed through their love for Lucy. In the tranquil roads of London, they are drawn against their will to the vengeful, bloodstained streets of Paris at the height of the Reign of Terror, and soon they fall under the lethal shadow of the guillotine. Actually sounds kind of interesting, to be honest. Um, we'll see how I get on with the language, because I did have a look and it does look quite dense and it's been a long time since I've read a classic of this age. Um, so we'll see how I get on with the language, but I'm also pretty sure that this is on script. So I'm sure I'll be fine. That was the last book, 12 books for under 13 pounds. Incredible, um, if I do say so myself. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this. I really hope you enjoyed this fun little secondhand book haul and I will see you in another video soon.